Hello, my name is Michael with Entertain Me TV Show Reviews, and this is the review for Weed Country Season 1, Episode 4, Unarmed and Dangerous. I'd uh, like to thank you for watching, and uh, if you want to follow along on this series, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any uh, suggestions for future reviews, then feel free to uh, leave a comment on this video or on my channel, or you can even me drop me a message here on YouTube. But um, without further ado, let's uh, move on to review itself. Deep in the heart of the Northern California mountains, marijuana growing season is underway. The Emerald Triangle, ground zero for a multi-billion dollar marijuana industry, originally comprised of three counties covering 10,000 square miles, is now growing out of control. It's a decades old battle between cops, dealers and growers. They stand to make millions or be locked up for years. In Vallejo, Matt Shotwell is heading to another Moana dispensary that's been shut down numerous times, Better Health Group. He's meeting with the owner. The store looks like a mess after the raid is completely trashed. Up at Grace Farms in the Emerald Triangle, Mike Luton finds out that his neighbor has placed a sign on his land which welcomes hunters to hunt down deer on Booten's property. Tony Booten takes care of the deer on their land and she's very mad and upset about it. Back in Vallejo, Matt Shotwell is heading for a lab with some of Mike Booten's weed. He's going to have the THC level tested. In the 60s, the THC level was around 3 to 4 percent on average. Now the average is about 10 to 15. Mike gets the result from the test and, it, uh, and Mike Booten's weed is at 23% THC, which is high. Now Matt, has, now Matt knows that he's dealing with some good marijuana and he knows that he'll be able to make money selling it. Back at Grace Farms, Mike Booten's bank account has been mysteriously closed down. He calls the bank, but they don't know why the account was closed. Back down in Vallejo, Matt Shotwell tries to reason with his girlfriend Soraya about him still being in the Moana business. So I'm so Soraya, Soraya, Jesus Christ, Soraya is not much for it. After having a chat with his girlfriend, Matt goes to meet with three former Greenwell associates. Matt plans to go to the Emerald Triangle this week, but needs mules to transport the marijuana back as he's out on bail. All his uh, three former associates agree to re reunite with their Matt. On the road in the Emerald Triangle, Sergeant Mike Gillian and Deputy Jason Jones follow up on a hot tip by a person busted in the previous raid who turned informant. They approach the locked gate, but they don't have enough evidence to just go through it so they decide to check the perimeter around a suspected farm on foot. They see about a half dozen school buses from a vantage point. Sergeant Mike Gill decides to attempt to call the gross out, but he gets no response. They head back and are flagged down by a passing vehicle, which informs them of activity in the area. At Grace Farm, Mike Booten has received a letter from the sheriff who revoked his concealed weapons permit. Without firearms, Mike and his wife Tony are defenseless if someone should come and try to steal their crop. In, in Vallejo, Matt Shotwell's girlfriend, girlfriend Soraya is threatening to leave him because he's staying in the Moana business. After an argument, she drives off. Matt gathers his three associates to begin their trip north to the Emerald Triangle. When out of nowhere, an unmarked police car pulls up to Matt. It appears that the police have seized all of Matt Shotwell's bank accounts, leaving him desperate for cash. Matt decides to delay the trip up north for the day. At Grace Farms, after having his concealed weapons permit revoked, Mike Booten decides to pack up his guns and take them to a relative's house. He's afraid that the cops might be able to say that he's going to use the firearms for a crime, so he'd rather remove the firearms from his house. They now have to rely on baseball bats and dogs if they have to defend themselves. Not long away, 
Sergeant Mike Gilly and his SWAT team are flying in to watch the illegal grow, which they surveyed early. They are dropped three miles from the grow and have to hike to keep their element of surprise. As they approach the campsite, a suspect takes off into the woods and they quickly lose him. They call in the chopper standing by the landing zone to recon from above, but the chopper can't find anybody. Three suspects manage to escape and the team then starts to remove all the marijuana plants from the site. On the road in the Emerald Triangle, Mike Booten heads to town to meet a potential new client. He meets with the client, which could be an undercover cop. Mike Booten ends up deciding to walk out of the potential client because he doesn't want to risk it. In Vallejo, just hours after his run in with the police, Matt Shotwell is once again ready to go up north. But two of his associates haven't showed up. He makes a call and learns that they are not going because they were spooked by the police earlier. The last associate standing, Squeeze, is the only one going. Because two out of three bail on Matt, he can't take home as much marijuana as he wanted to, which means that he'll make less money from this trip. So um, this was the review for Weed Country Season 1, Episode 4, Unarmed and Dangerous. I'd like uh, to thank you for watching, and if you want to follow along, then uh, once again, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, also, once again, if you have uh, some suggestions for further views, then uh, feel free to leave a comment here on this video, on my channel, or message me. But uh, once again, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next review.